If I wanted to get the total area of this whole space, then fine. Straight line that way, straight line that way, do the math, boom, it's done. However, look at this. Everything, I mean, everything twists and turns and bends everywhere and slams into straight edges. So using conventional measuring methods here is going to be tricky, which is why I am using, if I can turn on the right way, this Mosier, which is a motion-based measuring device. I'm going to use this because accuracy is important, time is important, ease of use is important. I will show you how quick and easy it is to measure all of this. So launch the Mosier app. Within moments, the device and my app will connect via Bluetooth. So diving into the app, let's press the plus symbol and I can choose a measurement type to suit the shape or area that we want to measure. We have a choice of closed shape, open shape, point to point and angle. So let's choose closed shape because we want, by the time we're finished measuring this whole area, we want the total area and we want the total perimeter of this space. So we're up and running all systems are firing on all cylinders. Looking on the app, we have a red light and it is telling me to go to our start point. I'm here already. I'm going to start here roughly in the middle of this site and measure the grass area and then capture all the other areas such as the pads, garden beds, etc., which are going to dovetail right here back into this point. So I've placed Mojo down at the start point. We wait a moment. The light goes from red to green, which means we are good to go. We can start measuring. I'm not going to hang about. I like to move fast between points and place Mojo down every six to eight seconds. Pause for a moment and let Mojo capture the point. Moving fast between points maximizes the measurement accuracy. And here I am off. I go again to the next point and I'm not trudging through molasses nor am I moving at running back speeds, going for a touchdown. But as a guide, I can travel about 40 feet in six to eight seconds easy over normal ground with Mosier One. And when I, you know, place it down, I don't crash land it. I like to take care, ease the brakes gently to place the device down and not come to a screeching halt or a hard stop and crash land the device. I'm not saying you handle like a delicate, soft, fluffy puppy but you wouldn't slam your guitar or smartphone into the ground and also just to notice that I like to hold the stick just like so between my fingers my just my three fingers which prevents the stick swinging overwhelming the gyros or slamming against my feet as I walk or against foliage and then when I place it down I like to let it rest between my thumb and my index finger ensuring that there's no movement while Moj does its thing I don't want to grab it tight whitening the knuckles of my fist because when I set it down, it's only going to be as still as my nervous system allows. And before you know it, you're back at the start end point, which is just over here. And I ensure that I land gently on that same start finish point to maximize the accuracy of the measurement. Press the red start stop button at the bottom here of the screen and there we have it as quick as that we have got the total area and the total perimeter we've all the distances lengths and they on there and of course the grass area is all drawn out i can jump into 3d view and pan around and get the lie off the land and see if there are any elevations i can select any point along the lines and make a note of the xyz coordinates the Z, of course, referring to the elevation. So let's just come out of there and we can name this space grass area. However, I need to also measure the pads for sealant, the garden beds for mulching, get a plan of the whole site for drafting. And to do that, I will add more layers. Layers is another feature that will allow me to measure and combine all these different shapes within this one measurement to ensure that all these layers are positioned relative to each other and are accurately aligned i need to capture two reference points along my first edge which is just right behind me if you remember this first edge was the initial straight line measurement i took along the grass area this was a deliberate choice for these reasons it's let's see it's long it's central 
and it's easily repeatable. All of the subsequent layers I take from here on in will share the same first edge and therefore be orientated and overlaid correctly onto the measurement. So let's select the layers and let's go for it. The reference points ideally must be approximately four to five meters or 13 to 15 foot apart and the idea here is I want it to be as long as possible as this will reduce any human error I may make on my measurement. So now that we've done that, let's make my way to the start of the shape that I want to measure. The path type is set to ignore line by default when you start a layer, which means that it will not appear on the drawing. And also I need to switch to whatever path type I want to use next, which in this case is going to be straight line. As I move along with my measurement, I can switch to different path types to suit the space in front of me, in this case behind me. And I'm switching here from line to arc because of the curve that you can just see. And I'm going to need at least three points to create the arc, but the more the better. So let's just move along. Great. There we have it, a well-defined arc. I can also capture a curve using trace as the path type. You just scroll along the bottom menu here and select trace easy then you follow the path all the way along using trace as the path type trace is great for tracing irregular and complex shapes for example as i trace out this meandering section every step of every swerve of every curve has been recorded and drawn out if i were to use conventional methods of measuring using a tape and then dividing the space into grids etc then doing the maths i know for a fact that i'm introducing major error the fact that Mosier here is doing these, inst these mathematical gymnastics for me is giving me peace of mind and also giving me a more accurate estimate. I will say though, that, you know, there is no right or wrong. You can choose arc or you can do trace if you want to measure out a curve. So right, the path ahead of us is changing again. So we can mid measurement, switch path types to straight line. So I'll just do that now. And as I move along, just look at this as I drift out, and then back again and then place more down we can see on there in the drawing that we have got a straight line between the two points despite me drifting halfway across the path and back and all the while i am remembering to place more down gently and i'll be honest it becomes an art form like any other tool i have ever learned to use i started off slow made a couple of mistakes kept trying got a little faster introduced some flow kind of looking good now and we need to just add a little bit more speed perhaps got into a rhythm got into my stride now some more speed some glide some soft hands and when I come into touchdown I ease off the brakes a little so in little to no time at all it all becomes second nature okay we can see here now that the path changes so I need to switch path types from straight line to Hmm, let's see, I think I'm going to choose trace and just glide along and cruise even. There we go. As I arrive back at our start point, I make sure to place the module down at exactly the same point in order to maximize the accuracy of the measurement. I now have all of the data, the measurement information, such as the total area, perimeter, elevation, gradients, etc. And I'm going to name this layer accordingly and move on to the next measurement, remembering to add a new layer and capture two reference points along my first edge, which is just all the way over there, if you can remember. The Mosier Pro app has a path type for every eventuality. This shape is obviously a circle and guess what, Mosier has a path type for a circle. It's simply three or more points to make that happen. Just select circle, we have one, let's get two, let's get three, and there we go. We've got a circle which is going to denote a garden bed. We've captured 
all of our shapes and our shapes within shapes with all of the twists and curves and bends slamming into straight lines and got all the numbers, all the data crunched by Mosier while we have measured. And if that hasn't saved me enough time, it has drawn everything out. So if I open up the layers menu, we can see all of our shapes and our shapes within shapes named and organized with all of the relevant numbers such as total areas, total perimeters, elevations for each space. So how long did that take? Over 10,000 square foot later or 1,000 square meters or thereabouts, not to mention all the areas measured within the overall area, we are finished. I'll pop the time up on the screen, but the important thing here is I was able as a one-man crew to measure faster and better and smarter with accuracy. We're looking at this whole garden plan in view now. So let's take a cheeky look in 3D. I can move the diagram around and get a feel for this whole garden landscape area and see elements that I can't immediately see looking at it normally or with the naked eye. I can see the elevation difference anywhere I choose. If I select a point, the coordinates X, Y, and Z are displayed on our Z, which refers to the elevation difference relative to where our start point was. It seems pretty flat to the naked eye, but gradients are important here for disability compliance on this site. So let's select our cross section tool. To dive in deeper, I can select this point here and that point, and I can get the length, the rise and the fall, or I can check out the gradient on this section of path. There we go. I can go to the gradient. There is my grade, my angles. I can see the lengths of the paved paths. The numbers are here to see, and even the curves. How easy was that to just glide along and have the curve drawn out and the numbers to appear next to it? Also, we can label specific measurements. I can go back into the app. Let's select a point here on the grass area and select edit. Select edit label and type in grass. Or I can select a point on the circle and type in garden bed, you know, circular. I can repeat for this whole area. Now, we can export, print, email to whoever, whenever, right now if we like, despite still being on site, we have multiple file types that can be exported, such as DXF for 3D applications like SketchUp Pro, AutoCAD, other file types are on there as well, like PDF, SVG, CSV, CSV++. So we know we can print off, we can email, it will land nicely into the workflow of other software programs like Dynascape, Vectorworks, ArcSight, programs like that. All of this from a small little device.